When I was 16 years old, I stuck a boy into my house for the first time and it did not go as planned. My room in my house used to be right next to my mom's room, but when I turned 16, I moved up to this room, which is the little loft room at the back of the house. So it's kind of secluded private and it has its own back door downstairs. Naturally, I was like, perfect opportunity here. I've got my own private little area. Let's invite a boy over. I had been talking to this guy and he was messaging me and we were talking about him coming over and i didn't think anything could go wrong because no one can hear my room from their room so it should be fine so i got all ready put on a cute little outfit and the boy said he was on his way he got an uber and he was like waiting outside my house for some unknown reason my stepdad had decided that this night he was going to stay up until 1 a.m in the living room watching tv this guy's already out of my house so i'm like well can't back down now we're gonna have to just make this work so the problem with that was in order to get the boy around the back of my house and through my little back door was he had to pass the living room windows so i was trying to figure out a way around this and then suddenly my stepdad just decided that it was a good time at 1am in the morning to go walk the dogs. So I see him getting ready to leave and I'm like, get out of the front of my house, like hide behind a fence or something. I don't know. Just get out of there so he doesn't see you. And once he was out walking the dogs, coast was clear and I snuck the boy in to my room. Not sure how, but I think my stepdad just kind of knew something was going on and he was like super sus. And he came and checked on me when he got back. And he's like, oh, you're still up. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, mm. There was a point in the night where I went downstairs to go use the bathroom. And I think while I was in the bathroom, he came and listened to my room. And he could hear movement because, I don't know, the boy, I don't know, whatever he was doing. So I think he just decided to go rat on me to my mom or something. He woke her up because she came to the base of the stairs and she was like, hey, like, can you come down? Like, I want to talk to you. And I was like... Oh, so scared, did not know what to do. And she basically brought me downstairs and she was like, is there anything going on that I need to know about? And I was like, no, what are you talking about? I'm just trying to get some sleep now. It's pretty late. And I like stuck to it. I was not ratting myself out. I guess my stepdad must've been like, no, she's lying because my mom came back and she was like, I'm coming up to your room. And this boy is like, what do I do? And he like, slips down the side of my bed and he's like lying under the bed my mom comes up and she's like i don't really think you're being honest with me do i need to like check your cupboard do i need to check behind the curtains blah blah, blah. and i'm like no like you don't and she was like look i don't want to invade your privacy but i think something's going on here i'm gonna trust you and i'm gonna leave and i was like okay yes please and then my little snitch of a cat came up into my room and started walking under the bed and meowing. Mum was like, okay, I'm gonna look under the bed. And <laughs> she looked under, locks eyes me, the boy. Most scary moment of my entire life. Probably the, the boy was probably more traumatized than me, to be honest, but my mum stood up and she looked me dead in the eyes and she was like, you lying little bitch. And that was the scariest moment of my entire childhood. Like. I thought I was going to get my ass beat. Anyway, so that boy and I ended up dating because he wrote my mum a letter being like, I'm so sorry that I did this. Like, I really care about your daughter, blah, blah, blah. And we ended up dating. And now we broke up. Once my mum had realised there was someone under my bed, she was like, you can come out now. And this poor boy did not move for a solid minute. I actually feel really bad. He must have been so petrified. The boy and I were actually super scared because we actually did really like each other and kind of wanted to have a relationship. But we were like, okay, now my family hates him. What are we going to do? So the boy told me that he wanted to write a letter to my mum to say sorry and hopefully get in her good books. Basically, he wrote a letter and hand delivered it to our house. I never got to read it, but it was something along the lines of, I'm so sorry, what we did was so stupid. Oh, we really should have asked you, blah, blah, blah. I really care about your daughter. I don't want this to ruin my relationship with you because I see a future with your daughter. My mum had a talk with me about how she was a bit upset that I didn't feel like I could ask her to invite the boy over. And just obviously that that can never happen again in the future. She also said she was glad that he wrote that letter because it showed that he did care about the situation and did care about me. My mum ended up forgiving the boy, but 
as you probably all expected, my stepdad did not. The guy and I had started dating and we were obviously hanging out, but never invite him over to my house because my stepdad said he's never allowed in the house ever again. And at one point I ended up asking my mom, I was like, we've been dating for a while now. Like, you know him, you really like him. Like, cause she ended up loving him at this point. He was a really great guy. Like he was so polite, respectful, apart from that one incident we had. Anyway, my mom told me that I had to ask my stepdad if I was allowed to have him over because he was the one who said he wasn't allowed to come back in the house. I took a while to do this because I was, first of all, just didn't really feel like talking to him in general because I was so mad that he had told my mum and not just taken one for the team. I eventually did and because it had been a while, he agreed to let the boy come over. Both my mum and my stepdad really ended up liking this guy. So it all worked out in the end and we ended up dating for about two years. So I don't know, I'd say the sneak in was worth it. <laughs> it I am my father's a fair child. But my mom didn't know my dad was married and when she found out she instantly broke it off, but she was already pregnant. So of course, my mother decided to have me and honestly, she's been a great mom to me. I have no complaints. My relationship with my father is okay. He does take me out on the weekends. He does visit for holidays, but I've never really lived with him. I remember one day when I was younger, I had to go to my father's house because my mom got extremely sick. So I was there for a couple of hours. And I remember the moment that I got there, my dad's wife started yelling at him and I had to actually separate myself from her because of how upset she was so I was literally in a bedroom away from her. To this day I have no idea why she was extremely upset. I can assume that she was upset because I was there but it's not my fault that they had a baby and he cheated on her like this has nothing to do with me I'm sorry. Not to mention can you really be upset because you knew he cheated and he had a kid and you're still with him so my mom explained the cheating situation to me when I got older and I realized how weird their situation was compared to how my other friend's parents got divorced. I don't know, not to compare, but it was just very weird. You have my opinions on their situation, but honestly, he's my dad, so I try not to think much about it. I know my dad's wife hates him and is the reason why I can't see my dad anymore. And honestly, she has a reason to be mad, but also screw her. Anyway, a couple months ago, my dad actually started asking me if I wanted to spend the whole weekend with him, which honestly to me was very weird, was very sus because his girl never wanted me around, she hated me. I had questions. I responded to him and I told him I would be okay spending the whole weekend with him as long as it's not at his house. He said his wife wants me to come and how she has a change of heart. And I immediately said no. It was very sus to me. It was very weird. I knew there was something going on at this point. So that weekend passed by and then the following weekend came up and me and my dad had plans to go eat lunch. The weird thing is his wife actually wanted to tag along which is again weird because she never used to so what changed? She ended up coming to this lunch with my father and I and honestly I wasn't really a fan of her being there but I was also just trying to keep my calm, just trying to be nice. I didn't need to be nice but I chose to be nice, okay? There at least has to be one mature one here. At the lunch, she basically told me how important I am to my father, especially now because they can't have kids and how she wants to make it up to me. She asked if she can be my stepmom and I was like, you want me to let you be my stepmom after everything you put me through? Absolutely not. It made me really upset and honestly, I have the right to be upset. My whole life, she made it extremely difficult to see my father and now you want to be nice? Now you want to be nice because you recently found out that you can't have kids? Wow. I'm not gonna lie, I might have let my emotions get in the way a tad bit and I might have been a little bit of an ass to her, but I feel like she deserved it. Why you might ask? I basically told her her not being able to have kids is her karma because of how awful she treated me growing up and I also ended up telling her that she was going to be nothing to me other than my father's wife. Lunch was over and later on she ended up crying to my father and my dad ended up telling me that I had to go and apologize to her because what I said was very evil and cruel which I mean I understand but can you blame me? Anyway, that night was over with. I ended up going back to my mom's house and one thing about me is I cannot hide my facial expressions. I cannot hide my emotions. So my mother knew something was wrong. 
I ended up telling my mother everything and she basically told me that my dad's wife put me in an unfair situation. My mother also mentioned to me that I should probably avoid her and stop talking to her, just give her some time, give her some space, and honestly, I agree with her. I am aware that my dad's wife is going through a lot and she is dealing with infertility and honestly she probably isn't over things which is why she blew up which is understandable but also too it's just like why did she have to disregard my feelings because now she went through something like i don't know but to me it's just very sad and upsetting how the only reason she decided to apologize is because she found out that she wasn't able to have kids and maybe i wasn't for it but i feel like she kind of deserved it i don't know you let me know for most of my childhood, I thought that I was adopted and my family just didn't tell me. Let me start off by saying that I didn't see any like birth pictures of myself. Like I had no proof that I was actually like my parents, okay? As a child, I was very quiet. I did not want to like cause a ruckus, a scene with teachers. Hey. Like I just didn't want to be a nuisance. So like I didn't want to like bring up something that I didn't know if it was true or not. I also lived in a very small town and there was a billboard in the small town literally right across the street from the Walmart that we always went to. Like I swear to God, I think I went to Walmart like three times a week as like a small child with my family. So right across from our like hometown Walmart, there was a billboard. And ever since I could remember, I always got told by my family that I was the kid on the billboard. They had their receipts. I saw the picture on the billboard and they had that actual picture of me like back like at home. I was a literal baby. Like it was a baby picture on this billboard. And when I was younger, obviously I couldn't read it. Like I didn't know what the billboard was. I was just like, mm. I'm like a child celebrity, I'm on a billboard. As I got older and could read, I realized that it was an adoption board for if you wanted to adopt a child, here's like the number and the contact for this adoption agency. At this time, I was like five or six, and so I really still didn't know what that meant. That billboard stayed on like the little billboard. I was wanting to get in again. That billboard stayed up, I think for like almost 20 years it finally got taken down by a tornado but anyways i want to say the time that i found out like what adoption was was around like i think seven or eight years old you're going to church and someone was doing like an adoption gosh fundraiser like someone was adopting a child well of course i connected the dots and realized that i was on adoption billboard every single day i would see that billboard and i was like oh my gosh my family found me from that adoption billboard and i am adopted and they have kept it from me for this long but i didn't tell them i kept it to myself for several years i think the way that children think and go about things is very fascinating i studied a lot of child development in college i don't really know why i thought this way as a child but I thought that if I told my parents that I found out that I was adopted and I was upset that they didn't tell me that I would just like go back to the adoption agency or something and like I wouldn't have a family. Also, I want to say adoption is a beautiful thing. But as a young child, like how are you supposed to know? The way that you process things, especially like in your own like internal self is very, very different. I, it was like I was holding like a deep, dark secret. I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe like this isn't my family. Like it was so awkward for me. <laughs> who are these people like where did i come from like i end up asking my mom like i'm literally in tears i can remember the moment that this happened i was in the kitchen i was just like bawling my eyes out and she's like what is wrong i was like i am adopted and you didn't even tell me what are you talking about lauren at this point i wasn't upset that i was adopted at all i was just upset that i never got told and i figured like all of my family knew about it and it was just like a big secret I ended up explaining why i thought the things that i did while bawling and she was like you are not adopted basically explained that they were looking for a child to be on this billboard and they offered up my baby picture everyone was very shocked that i kept this to myself for so long i guess they just didn't even think that i would even guess or wonder that after the fact i did finally see pictures of like my mom pregnant with me and like obviously I was hers. But that's the secret that I kept for several years of my childhood. And like I said, that billboard stayed up until I think I was like 19 or 20 years old. So I really hope that that billboard helped other families get children and was able to like have an addition to their family. But it was, it was interesting as a child with that. Well, here's an official story on how I met my husband. Well, I started talking to my husband when i was 19 and when i was 19 and he was 21 and at the time i was studying i was in college 
I was not interested in anyone and I've come from a brown household and it's not easy to just be chatting or be engaged in a haram relationship it depends i was never interested in one anyway so i do actually have the kind of relationship where i'll be telling my children yeah i met your dad through dms anyway these abdul actually had dm'd me and i don't know exactly what he dm'd me but it was along the lines of hey x or something like that and we're going to ignore i've been ill um i've got a lot of crusty skin around my nose because i've just been sneezing but yeah ignore that and also ignore this collar because it kind of just lifts up and it's really pissing me off so he dm me and i blanked him the first time because i'm just not interested at all and i'm from an Asian household so relationships is a huge no-no i blanked him clearly that was enough so he tried this shot again and i did respond to that saying hey i'm not interested respectfully could you leave me alone he was like yeah no worries blah blah blah, blah. obviously you'd think that would be the end of it but it wasn't actually reached out again i'm um, down the line a couple of months later and at that point i was like do you not understand i do not want to speak to you at this point i was just like you need to respect yourself but yeah so he did actually leave me alone there was no conversation i did not want to chat anymore and he did like exit the dms until a couple months later again and this time he messaged by replying to my story saying wifey material it was literally his exact words and i remember at the time being very giggly about it but thinking like is this guy for real do you not get the message i actually have no reason as to why i replied to his dm i was like thank you and the conversation kind of just took from there like there was no intention of talking it just kind of flowed for some reason bearing in mind that i was very private with my personal life i mean i still am but like i when i tell you i had like five people on snapchat and that was it he i must have given him my snap willingly like hey i don't talk on instagram um, feel free to you know message me on snap as i'm more active on that and he did he messaged me on snap and i gave him a snap and then i realized that i've just gone ahead and given him a snap and i don't know why i did that and the funniest thing is that i was actually flying out to pakistan four days after oh so for me it was like even if i was to go down the relationship route unintentionally i'm not even going to be here for another two months so the guy will probably fall, exit my life himself anyway because if he is the type of guy that's desperate or looking for a you know situation ship you ain't gonna get that from me i am not seeing you and that was it i was like i literally told him i am going to pakistan the night before he still kind of continued and he was like i don't intend on having a relationship i just kind of want to be a friend which sounds really odd now that we're married but yeah we were kind of just talking as friends we were very like close and clingy in a way it was like we were best friends and i had known him for so long like we was referring to each other as my ass wife but it makes me want to vomit we were referring to each other as my love this that blah 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 and i just started seeing it i was like why 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 are you doing this and there was definitely a lot of chemistry and it was just also weird because i like we kept being pulled towards each other like i said it was very confusing because there was no intentions of a relationship whatsoever but we kind of just got to a point where i was actually waiting for his replies and he was waiting for mine vice versa even though i was literally across the globe from him it didn't kind of throw us off or throw him off which i thought it would anyway thought so he'd get bored and he'd just like you know crack on with his life well that's the generation we live in now anyway and it's very weird because he actually had the urge to say i love you so many times but i was just like do not say those words if you don't mean them because i hold them very close to me and i don't want another guy just telling me i love you within a few weeks of just talking like we haven't even seen each other it just doesn't make sense and he said it and i was like you're taking the piss right and even though i had this kind of clingy attention or chemistry with him i was in denial of my feelings and i was just like i was just like no i don't have any feelings but it was quite obvious that we clearly had some sort of connection just kind of kept it at like a close friend slash best friend level very cringe it's very very cringe but obviously he said all of you after a month and i just found that very like hard to believe and then gradually within the second month i had the urge to say it as well and it's very weird like we just thought we were so like compatible and everything just aligned it's just really weird because i can't justify it but you know when you know like that that is your person i had that feeling with him and he had the same feeling with me like we just thought 
no like this this is my person like, i just didn't understand like why i spoke or replied to him in the first place but it kind of just made sense and so i don't know if i was just delusional or what at the time but i was just like it makes sense as to why i replied like the universe wants this like this is meant to happen um after two months and this was just before i was coming back to the uk i actually said it i was like i love you it's very weird but um yeah i kind of just like said i i do like i feel like we have a really strong connection and even though we haven't met each other i f i see a future with you like it's very very weird and then obviously i came back to the uk from a holiday and i actually was very intimidated in seeing him i was just like i don't know if i'm doing the right thing obviously given the you know my beliefs and whatnot i was just like i don't know if i should see him or whatnot and i've come from a household where it's very strict like i couldn't do that so i was just like okay how are we gonna do this and i just i just went with my heart i was like you know what i'm gonna give it a shot i'm gonna see what it is about and we'll take it from there like my heart was just kind of like dragging me along with it sounds so weird like but yeah so after two three weeks of just longing the official link up i'd finally decided okay i'm gonna see him i'm gonna see what this is about and we linked up it went so good like the flow was there the chemistry was there very respectful he didn't you know make me feel uncomfortable i was convinced he wasn't the type of guy that he was with me for lust for just to use me and just throw me away and there was definitely something deeper there and so i remember after i spoke to him and we just like had like an hour or two together to talk i went back to my best friend and i was like i really like this guy and i never had that feeling before i just had the ache from men and i was just never interested growing up without a dad it was very normal for me to just stay away from men and avoid them so yeah i was just like i really really like this guy I think we started seeing each other more but that's where like temptations kick in and i was very scared that we was going to commit something like commit dinner or do something that we was not meant to do so after four or five months i actually said that i think we're ready to get married and to be honest that should be the only goal and if it isn't you need to walk away from me so i basically was like you're gonna have to tell your mom if you're serious yeah i was just like you're going to have to tell your mom if you're serious and if you truly care you will the thing with abdul is he is from a cultural household so he didn't really have the kind of religious background or the cultural background but he knew the basics he knew what was right and wrong he kind of had like a little taught did what we was gonna do obviously if you're serious you're gonna tell your mom i don't see why you wouldn't that's where he decided that he would I don't believe words like i i need i'm all about actions so yeah within a week or so he basically told his mom and if you guys don't know abdul is actually half white and half bengali his mom is white obviously she didn't really have much of an issue or did his dad like really have much of an issue there was nothing you know complain about he was very young and obviously at the end of the day his parents are the type of parents that like do what you gotta do it's your life and we're not gonna get involved he obviously had his mind straight on what he wanted i don't think like there was any issues or anything there was actually nothing to worry about from his side at this stage then it came to march lockdown i believe it was the first ever lockdown during covid in 2020 2020 i think 2020 decided that i was then going to tell my mom too because if there were talks in my family that i was going to get married to someone from back home that was a huge no-no so i decided that this is where i'm going to have to tell and as hard as it is bearing in mind that i come from a really really strict household i'm going to have to do it because i don't want to be committed in a haram relationship uh, one of the days i must have tried to tell my mom but i told tried to tell her on multiple occasions but i just couldn't do it and then my sister literally forced my mom to sit down and we managed to talk and my mom kind of really got the gist from it like she kind of had a clue as to why i'm trying to sit her down because our relationship wasn't really good i wouldn't really want to talk to her so yeah she kind of had this little tingling feeling that i know what's about to come out of my mouth and so i basically told my mom and she was not happy she basically listened to what i have to say and then ended up saying block him you're not gonna marry him and i was like what that was basically the conversation or how the conversation went and i said to my mom no i'm not and her way of dealing with it was at the time to just take my phone off of me you just ended up taking my phone and said if you're not gonna block and go no contact i'm gonna take your phone and stop you from leaving the house and 
yeah i was basically grounded my mom said no and unfortunately because my family were being long his family couldn't be bothered to deal with it if i'm being honest we're talking solely about the parents like his parents just couldn't be bothered to meet in the middle but my whole family's at the time i my parents were really like trying to put them off and it was working they just didn't give a fuck enough to you know continue to try which is resulting in you know well if she's struggling she needs to ring the police and we can't do anything um which is something that i obviously couldn't do but it was just a very difficult period having absolutely no support from see his side and obviously my side too and just kind of going through it alone and so we went through six months of very minimal contact and it was very depressing for us i began to get really bad i stopped eating i actually put on a lot of weight so i put on weight when i'm stressed that's when my body just started changing i i really didn't like it because I, I couldn't do anything about it and that's when people comment on my weight it really bothers me because i easily put weight on when i'm stressed i have genuinely been through a lot and sometimes i genuinely sit down and i do look at myself and i'm like not who i used to be but then obviously i remember the amount of trauma that i've gone through and i've literally grown and birthed a whole human being it's not the end of the world i don't know why we're talking about weight but i just thought seeing as we're talking about it anyway um but yeah that was one of the effects anyway it was pretty deep and coincidentally i'm not going through the whole story of how what when because those details are still very personal i've never actually fully spoken about it i actually managed to leave the house never had the courage to do it um abdul kind of helped me to do it um because it, it was just getting very toxic very abusive um and it was getting to a point where plans were obviously being made of me getting back, married back home things are so blessed right now they have been the best they've been my family love abdul everything is so blessed but it was just at that time things were just very chaotic but yeah it was, it was just getting too much and i was having obviously negative thoughts of yeah it, it was time for me to get out and obviously with the help of my sister and my abdul i was gonna say my man um yeah i actually did end up leaving the house and what a coincidence it was that i actually met him or reunited with him on his birthday it was crazy and obviously due to the circumstances and the lack of family support from both sides it was a situation of we basically got married at half 11 at in the night at a mosque and we basically just just said our vows um had our witnesses there was no getting ready there was no wedding there was no preparation or anything it's just we turned up we do our vows and we were islamically married that's it so yeah it, i mean it was a blessing in disguise i feel like obviously at the time we really was at first and i do sometimes sit down and think like i've always wanted to be a bride um and i didn't get my dream wedding but it's a blessing in disguise and alhamdulillah that we did manage to get married and that, that was the most important thing for us so and i feel like a huge misconception is the fact that my mom cut me off she actually didn't i never had support in the sense of getting married but my mom has been supportive of me through my whole marriage like she obviously wasn't willing to accept my husband because it was too much conflict and it would affect her marriage and blah 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 blah, blah. so he obviously was just not in the picture but with me my mom was obviously very supportive uh, financially whenever i needed her yeah she she was still in the picture it was just that abdul wasn't that was the only part that actually genuinely sucked After a couple of months loki she started liking him um obviously my dad did obviously didn't know much about that by the way i do want to also say my dad is not my biological father but i don't like talking about those things because i don't see him that way anymore he is more like a father but yeah time uh, my mom loki was like starting to like him but she did approve of him within a few months she saw that you know what he's not the type of person she thought he would be it didn't actually take until i gave birth for things to be fine i basically forced them that they had to accept him if they wanted to have access to his child things went fine it was everything just kind of settled really quick and now they literally love him more than me and my mom literally loves him to bit and that's it basically you know he's so loved zyra is literally everyone's angel and my family literally can't live without her and yeah that's basically how i met my husband